Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Take 5. We're taking time out of your day to talk movie news. Right, we're going to be discussing our top three and bottom three movies of the summer. Now I've got at number three, After Earth. Why? Because, well, honestly, none of us saw After Earth. We almost Not did. Once. We almost saw After Earth, but between its first showing and us seeing the late showing, it was already the most black blacklisted movie on the internet in right. terms of how horrible it was. And then number two, we have White House Down, which... Honestly, wasn't terrible until the third act. It, it could have been a good movie if they didn't one line the last 45 minutes of the movie. Right. It was just one cheesy line after the other. Right. And the first the first two acts, I thought, were really cool and fun and creative. And it was just right. a big popcorn movie. And I was having a good time. It seemed a lot like Roland Emmerich taking all of his favorite things from his previous movies, like blowing up the White House or having someone wave a flag or flares to stop planes from blowing something up, and it was just all done nowhere near as good. Yeah, the third act was just awful. So yeah. if you want to watch it, just watch, watch Olympus Has Fallen. Watch Olympus Has <laughs> Fallen, or you can just watch the first two-thirds of the movie yeah. and then just turn it off. Just stop. And then just make up your own ending. Choose your own adventure movie. Because no matter what you pick, it's going to be better than the ending that they wrote. Our number Speaks one movie, which we all agree upon, is Ugh. Man of Steel. Just from a ground level of movie making, I just felt like there was the, the tone shifted so much. It went, they couldn't decide if they okay. wanted Avengers or they wanted mm -hmm. Dark Knight. Right. My uh, The thing I hated most about the movie was uh, Kevin Costner's character didn't get screen time as much as... Like, which they, is a terrible waste of Kevin Costner. Right. They... So. The better choice for the movie would have been to play off of that story arc more with Kevin Costner saying you can't, you know, show your powers to anyone. Right. A more linear. Right. Mm -hmm. Because and that that was another thing. Not not just from the, another level of just movie making was the script was just it just jumped around and you could see they were trying to kind of follow the Batman Begins kind of format where we show a little bit of what's going on now and then we mm -hmm. show. But they did it out of order, so you'd see baby Clark, you'd see teenage Clark, you'd see eight-year-old Clark, and it was just... And then certain lessons that he was supposed to learn didn't match up. I mean, he's told to restrain his powers and hide his powers, yet he, in the present time, he bat tears, no he tears a semi-truck in half, essentially, right. with, with telephone poles. I haven't been that disappointed since May of 1999 when I saw Phantom Menace. In terms of sheer upbuilding excitement that I thought I was going to see a well done Superman movie. Because it had all the right ingredients. You it had really did. I'll, first of all, I'll say Henry Cavill should keep playing Superman. I like Henry Cavill as Superman. Perfect Superman. He nailed it. In terms of, I think Superman is such an intriguing, deep psychological character, just like Batman. You can make a thousand great Batman movies because you can just delve into the psychology and things like that, which I think people just look at Superman and just see like this unstoppable force of just Boy Scout, like you said. Um, we're just going to make a giant action movie, whereas really I would love to see it done well in terms of his origin and people having a hard time accepting the fact that there's this being on their planet that's capable of killing them all if said you know like if he felt like it well, um, and essentially we find out Superman's uniform is really just Kryptonian pajamas because everyone else wears the exact but they wear clothes over them like cool battle suits but so does, they just they went it was weird because they went to explain everything scientifically yet there were things like the suit that didn't make sense. Yeah, we're revealing the suit and it's just why? Why is it blue and red and why, underwear? Why is it just? Why is there no? Why, why is do there you no get a underwear? cape? None of us have capes. <laughs> <laughs> You're special. We put a cape on you. <laughs> At the end of the day, the entire last hour of that movie is Superman like killing tons of civilians, like telling people run into that building and then throwing a semi at it. You know, like two <laughs> seconds later. So, sorry. You know. Any last thoughts? Um, other than it's okay. him killing Zod? Uh, other than, yeah. Spoiler alert. <laughs> we don't care about spoiler alerts anymore because it's been like two months. Yeah, and you don't know he killed Zod and that's just that's bad. So. Right. <laughs> For and really no real reason. He, I don't think he really even tried to stop from killing Zod. And that was even, that scene itself wasn't even set up properly because he's just, <laughs> there's so many, like the family could just move out of the way 
He could. Oh my god. That he he's got him in a sleeper hold. You know, you could just hold out until he not loses consciousness. Right. And that's another huge like complaint I have about the movie is there was nowhere near enough Zod. At the end, when you kind of find out his arc and they explain it, you're like, dang! If they had been like building on that the whole movie, I would have been, I would have been way more into this. Yeah. But at the end, it's just like, oh, here's why Zod's crazy, dead. <laughs> <laughs>